Hey, uh, this is a different type of review. Something I don't usually review is a Dragon Gate Japan review. I'm not going to review GG USA. Uh, G. Oh. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, this show took place, where did it take place or not? I think it was in Kobe. Yeah, it was the, uh, I guess, that Pro Wrestling Festival 2011. It's. Um, one of their big shows is that in this final gate. But anyway, it was uh, July 17th, 2011, and it was a very good show. Let's start with the uh, opening. It kind of opened with the guys, the commentators going over kind of the card while there was a dark match going on in the ring. It was a little bit weird. It's a little unorthodox, but hey, no one else does it. Alright, our opener was, like our proper opener, was R.A. Kinchiro and Iwasa Taku versus Super Shisha and Kagatoro. Uh, yeah, this was a very solid match, 55%. The, the Dragon Gate uh, PA announcer, he's got a deep fucking voice, he's kind of scary. It's better than TNA guy though. I was just uh, waiting for him to say. Fatality, flawless victory, something like that. Uh, I knew Kegator going in, kind of, uh, she's or whatever, but I don't know. I kind of dug the Lucha Rest style, and the other guys were alright. But ma mainly Kegator, who was, he was like above everyone else in the match, I think. Uh, this, get, this did his job, got the crowd hyped, and uh, the New Japan ref was officiating it. Which made it more important, I guess. <laughs> All right, then we had Yokosuka Susua and Rich Swan versus Saito Rio and Horiguchi Genki. Uh, this is like seventy-three percent. Yes. Um, there was a match where I knew all the participants for once. Uh, uh, I, I love Swan because he's the, the crazy motherfucker beatboxes to the ring. And uh, he could sing his own uh, team's theme song, which uh, is pretty unique. I'm not saying he's the most talented guy, but he's hilarious. So that's good. Uh, Dragon Gate is kind of proof that you can is proof that you can split your roster and put them in like entirely into factions, and it can still work, unlike other companies. You know what I'm talking about. They shouldn't have a TV deal. All right, uh, yeah, this match had the uh, heat, star presence, and the uh, good wrestling. Uh, that kind of the opener is sort of lacked, definitely lacked star power. Uh, this was uh, almost too much to follow. It was very hectic and crazy, and uh, yeah, I just like uh, uh, Saito's suplexes and Swan's batshit craziness. Uh, yeah, but these guys can't even blow their noses without hitting a spot. I mean, <laughs> no half speed here. These guys just go full blast. And no, it's, yeah, it was an excellent contest. Like I said, 73. All right, then we had our fun match. Uh, Takayama Yoshihiro and uh, Don Fuji and Hollywood Stalker Ichikawa versus Tenziki, Naoki, KZ, and Tomahawk TT. Uh, yeah, you... It was just fun. Um, I think we can officially declare it the ugliest match in Dragon Gate history, just based on the uh, faces of the combatants alone. I mean, pretty ugly fucking people in this match. Uh, yeah, I was already a big fan of Takayama and Don Fuji, for obvious reasons. Uh, they were kind of like the grumpy old men, and uh, the other guys were stepping on their lawn, and they went into rage mode. Like that's what old men do. Step on their lawn and cut your fucking head off. I just imagine Takayama and Fuji is old men. Uh, yeah, the other guys that I wasn't really sold on, but then Hollywood, uh, the Stalker Ishikawa just really sold me. Uh, he took a beating um, from these guys blood from Blood Warriors who looked like they escaped from Arkham Asylum. Uh, I, I gotta say, uh, Ishikawa took a worse beating than Amy Winehouse's liver. Too soon? Uh, yeah. 
Um, at one point, Fuji scoop slams his own uh, proper scoop slam, not a power slam. Scoop slams his own partner to motivate him, and then he almost gets pinned, and Fuji has to save him from his own scoop slam, which is just, I don't know, it's pretty funny. Uh, once Fuji and Takayama got going, I mean, grumpy old men reign supreme. Uh, Blood Warriors made the mistake of stepping on a lot, like I said, and they got blown away. Uh, this is just, yeah, like I said, pure fun, especially the rope running, which you have to see for yourself. Uh, and that triple every German suit. Every German suplex makes this match, you know, pretty okay. <laughs> Fun as hell. Uh, then we had he opened the Triangle Gate title, which is obviously three man title. Yamato, Yoshino, Masato, and Gamma, the champions, versus the challengers, Doi Naruki, Kanda, Yush Yashu, Yashushi, and uh, Cybercom. Uh, Cybercom is just a, I don't know. Big bad guy. So is Gamma's kind of a bad guy too. Like he's good, but he's a badass. No, uh, yeah. Obviously Yamato, Yoshino, and Doi are just great wrestlers. Uh, yeah, this triangle action did not disappoint. Uh, not surprisingly, uh, Doi and the uh, Blood Warriors don't wait for the belt. They they're dirty heels. They broke a lot of rules. Uh, you can't expect a clean match here. The ref didn't see any, of course, because Dragon Gate refs are blind, besides the New Japan one. <laughs> uh, he, yeah, Yamato tried to get Kong off his feet, which is kind of cool. Um, it, it didn't really pan out, at least at that moment. Uh, Gamma's saliva is just a weapon, man. He uses saliva like no one. Like a mist, almost. Like a green mist. Yeah. Lugi. Uh, Yamato was beaten like a government mule. He took a huge beating. Uh, Doi showed that he's a natural born D bag and uh, just a great heel. Uh, this kept the uh, triple team he had to fight on Yamato and it got worse and worse and then. But once he got Yoshino in, Yoshino tore shit up and uh, he even suplexed Cybercom, which is crazy because Yoshino's like half his size. Maybe. Uh, he's pretty tiny. Uh, Yamato. Easily has the sickest sleeper hold in all of Dragon Gate, and uh, it made me mark when I saw it. It's probably the biggest mark out moment of the whole match, honestly. Uh, yeah, insane match, blind referee, lots of interference, which is fun. Sometimes it can work. And uh, yeah, I guess I'd give this match maybe 79%. I mean, close to 80. Uh, then we had a special singles match. Shingo versus Tozawa and Akira. This is like 83%. Uh, this match was great. Uh, Shingo is pretty much as badass as they come, and then you get Tozawa, who's as crazy as they come. So just a, uh, it's a good matchup. At one point, uh, a Tope Suicida attempt from Tozawa was caught by Shingo like on the shoulders, and he did the Death Valley Driver or bomb on the floor, not on the mat, on the cement, on the cement. Uh, yeah, this is uh, not exactly catch catch can, but this is a brutal match. The head drops in this were friggin' old school, like, Jumbo-esque, Jumbo Tenryu-esque. It was just a great match, and Tozawa has improved so much from his DG USA run. I don't know if it's a booking or what, but he looks meaner, he is meaner, and his wrestling ability and his intensity is just off the charts. He's not even recognizable now. Uh, the future definitely looks bright when you have guys like Tozawa and Yamato around. Shingo is always going to be a great wrestler. Probably the biggest badass in Japan. Can I say that? He's smaller, but I guarantee you put him up against Sakamoto. You'll out and tense him. Alright, then we had the Open the Twin Gate Unified Tag Titles. Dragon Kid and Pac Champions versus the Challenger Shima and Ricochet. Uh, 79%. Pac is starting to look a little too much like he went to Chris Benoit's old doctor, but it could be natural. I hope it is. Uh, this match is just ridiculous, like completely fucking ridiculous, but in a good way. Uh, Seema and Pac were, were, were definitely the best wrestlers in the match overall, but that's not to put down Ricochet and Dragon Kid at all because they're still really great. I marked out for everyone. Uh, this match is the... I don't know, just the craziness and the spots and the, the suspense was great. It probably should have ended about three seconds after the 20-minute mark. 
but there was a kick out and then there was a few more and it was it was overkill and I didn't like who won but it was still even with the overkill it's like a strong 80% alright then we had the main event for the open the dream gate title the challenger BP Hulk versus the champion Mochizuki Mizaki uh, this is I don't know, maybe 81%, uh, which is great. Match of the year candidate for sure. Uh, BB trying to stand up in exchange with Bucci was kind of funny. It's kind of like a house cat charging an angry rhinoceros. Uh, you know Hulk has no chance winning a straight up striking exchange. His only chance is to out quick. Uh, I enjoyed watching Hulk get beat half to death because as any self-respecting uh, male, you know, straight gay or otherwise, uh, you can't support Hulk. He, he's a fucking cheerleader. By the way, if you think cheerleaders are manly, George W. Bush was a cheerleader, so kind of takes away any coolness there might have been. Ah, uh, yeah, that sneaky fuck Hulk kind of found a way to get to the arm of Mochizuki, and he almost took it out. And uh, yeah, that was impressive. He went back to it a few times, and, which is good because jujitsu is a great equalizer. I mean, Hoist Gracie used to beat much bigger guys. The problem is when the other guy skills Mochizuki. There's only so long that you can out quick and go after the arm and stuff because he will eventually show that he's a superior fighter and um, a harder striker. Uh, but again, uh, Hulk tried to exchange with uh, Mochizuki, which was like trying to exchange with a bomb shelter door. I mean, no matter what you do, you're not going to stop him. You're not going to take him down. Uh, still, uh, BB Hulk looked great. His superior cardio seemed to help him get the advantage later on, Mochizuki started to tire. But yeah, it was just a great match, and I don't like to do spoilers, so just know that the ending was uh, was great, and that Hulk Shingo Ultra Overkill wasn't there, but the intensity was. Uh, this is probably the best BB Hulk match I've ever seen. Singles, uh, which is pretty phenomenal. Overall, the show is phenomenal, and it's a strong contender for show of the year. I would put it top top three with Manhattan Mayhem and Money in the Bank at number one. Uh, overall, I give it nine head drops out of ten, which is pretty fucking good. All right. Uh, good night. Good day. Good luck. Good everything else. And uh, run. It's good for you. I started running recently. All right. Peace.